Hey Ayurveda Everyday with Talia. This is Talia Lutzker, Certified Ayurvedic Practitioner, coming to you for our Facebook Live today. So I'm very excited to be here. I'm so grateful for this group. I just want to say how much I love and adore um, this beautiful community of people who are passionate about health and looking to find out how Ayurveda can help help you feel as an amazing as possible. And it, it's truly an honor to um, get to be the leader of this community. So thank you for being here. Okay, so today I want to talk about how to determine your dosha beyond quizzes. Because almost, except for me at the moment, but mine is coming, um, you know, almost any Ayurvedic website these days has a quiz for you to take to help you determine your dosha. And when I first found Ayurveda, hey Maggie, um, when I first found Ayurveda in 2001, my very first experience with it was I was um, at my yoga teacher training um, and it was just uh, like maybe we spent, I don't know, an hour and a half or two hours on Ayurveda. I had never heard of it before and what they did was we have this binder and they're like, okay, sit down and take 20 minutes to like fill out this quiz. And some of you already know my story, but, um, you know, I suffered from extreme, extreme body dysmorphia and eating disorders um, for most of my 20s, really until I discovered Ayurveda. So, um, and I think I was 27 or 28 when I was at my yoga teacher training so when I sat down to take the quiz, my my mindset and my viewpoint, my perspective on the questions was absolutely colored by the way that I saw myself, which was distorted. So, and this is just my personal story, right? But when I took the quiz, um, it came out with a result that is not actually my dosha. And as an Ayurvedic practitioner, you know, now I, I'm so grateful that I had that experience because it showed me that these quizzes are actually, it's actually not that simple to determine your dosha when you haven't spent a long time studying the vast science of Ayurveda because there's so much to Ayurveda. It's not just like, oh, hot, cold, wet, dry, vata, pitta, kapha. It's so easy. Like every once in a while, I will encounter a client or a student who is really easy. Their their pulse, um, their constitution is very straightforward. Like, for example, if you have one of my favorite books, in fact, it was one of my very first Ayurvedic books. It was also Kate Stillman's first book. Um, Maya Tawari wrote it. It's called Ayurveda, A Life of Balance. I love that book. Highly recommend that book if you don't already have it in your library. But Maya Tori does one of the best jobs of any Ayurvedic um, educational resource on the difference between the doshas. And then she also gives these epic food lists for vata, pitta, kapha, but also if you're vata predominant, pitta secondary, or pitta predominant, kapha secondary or kapha predominant vata secondary. So she's really the only, has only, she's the only person I've ever seen write a food list that is that specific for the 10 different combinations of doshas, because there are 10. You could be vata pitta, vata kapha, pitta vata, pitta kapha, kapha vata, kapha pitta, tridoshic. Did I miss anything? I think that's it. Um, so there's actually 10 different variations. And when we're talking about the dosha, like what is your dosha? We're not talking about, you know, what your symptoms are currently. We're looking at where did you come from genetically, karmically, hereditarily? What is your constitution and what has it always been from the moment that you took your very first breath? You know, that's, it's kind of Ayurveda's viewpoint is, I love this, actually, this is my interpretation, but if who you are is karmic in nature, that means that 
exactly who you are, the way you are, down to every single little freckle on your body is divinely, uh, was divinely sourced and has always been coming. Like there are no accidents. And I did, I was at the NAMA conference a couple weekends ago and one of my favorite speakers, he was actually more than one of my, of the speakers was talking about that. Like there's no accidents. You really are exactly where you're supposed to be. And that includes who you are and where you are in your constitution, as well as your present imbalances. The difference between your core constitution and your present imbalance is your present imbalance can be changed, right? You can do all kinds of Ayurvedic nutrition and herbs and body care. You can do seasonal cleansing. You can do annual panchakarma. There's so much you can do to keep your current imbalances in check and to change them. So if you are somebody who is pitta kapha in your core, but you have a vata imbalance that's giving you all kinds of insomnia and anxiety and dry skin and constipation, you can change that. But you can't change who you are at your core. And that's also on purpose. It doesn't mean that you can't be the best version of who you are at your core. That's what I feel like Ayurveda every day is all about. Um, but it's that's the same thing as bringing your current imbalances into balance or, you know, the best state that they can possibly be in for who you are and what your imbalances are and what you've come into this lifetime to um, to learn and to overcome and to process um, those are part of your divine plan. So when you take a quiz, you know, you can take a quiz in two different ways. You can take the quiz where you're like, okay, I am taking this quiz to try to determine my core constitution. That means I've got to think back as far as I can to be like, what was I like as a child? What could my mom or my dad or my siblings remind me about? You could even look at pictures of yourself when you're little, little kid and be like, yeah, like, like when I took the quiz um, and ask questions, if you have questions, by the way, I feel like I'm just kind of monologuing right now. Um, and hopefully this is really landing for you and helpful to hear my experience. I hope that it is. Um, but when I was a little kid, um, I have this one picture of myself. Who, who remembers Esprit? Who remembers the brand Esprit? Right. I was born in 1972. So in the 80s, Esprit was like the ultimate. I was so into it. And it was the only brand of clothing I wanted to wear. And it was um, I wanted to be an Esprit model. I remember. Um, but I loved Esprit. And I remember this one picture of me. I'm wearing like a, a pair of shorts and a matching button down shirt. It's like blue with bananas on it. <laughs> if you were into a spree in the eighties, you actually might really remember this print, but you can see my legs in the picture. And I have such skinny legs. Like my knees are just like, it's a really, really stand out because my legs were so skinny. Well, I'm not so skinny now. I mean, I'm not, I'm not a giant person, but I'm Vata predominant in my core constitution cough a secondary. When I took that quiz in 2001, not understanding really how to take the quiz so that I was going to get an accurate answer. Plus I had body dysmorphia. So there was no way I was going to see myself as skinny in any way, shape or form, even as a little kid. Um, but seeing that photo was really a light bulb moment for me of like, oh my God, look at Look at my legs. I was tiny. I was also the smallest kid in my class. At one point, I was the smallest kid in school. Hi. Um, people called me shrimp, which was not a compliment, but m there are more clues for me to look back at my core constitution from before I was 10 years old and be like, yeah, I was Vata predominant. If I really can get a bigger picture, I can see that. And sometimes it's hard to see that in the quizzes. So the second way that you can take an Ayurvedic quiz is you can take the quiz from what is happening for me right now? 
what's going on for me right now? What are my symptoms? If you haven't yet downloaded my Ayurveda Starters Guide, which is the free gift that I offer on my website, taliaskitchen.com, definitely grab that. It doesn't have a dosha quiz inside of it, but it really explains the difference between hot, cold, wet, and dry, like what it means when you're experiencing the different elements of Ayurveda in your body, mind, and spirit. Like what does that really look like, feel like? How can you sense that so that it's not like this elusive thing of, I don't know, you can really hone in on it and and start to understand it on a physical, physiological level. Um, But you can answer the questions from the present moment experience you're having of your body, mind, spirit, and that will give you a sense of where your imbalances are. And there's a another resource I think everybody should have is the um, cookbook that was written by Devia Alter. It came out a couple years ago. It's called What to Eat for How You Feel, The New Ayurvedic Kitchen. And every recipe that she gives, she writes her recipes so that they're offered to you seasonal, seasonally in a seasonal format. And then, so you're like, okay, this is good food for me to eat in this season. But then she gives a little, um, a little thing on the side of each recipe that says, but if your digestion is airy, fiery, or earthy, which you start to learn and understand when you understand the difference between hot, cold, wet, and dry, um, she invites you to adjust the recipe for where you're at with your digestion. And I second that because your digestion is the root of your health. So if your digestion is off and you could have any digestive symptom, no matter what your core constitution is, that's the first imbalance to bring back into homeostasis is your digestion. So You can answer a quiz from where you're at, your current symptoms, get a sense of what you're answering around your digestion and work on that first. That's another way to approach the quizzes so that the answers that you get are at the very least, they're useful to you in the moment, even if on a bigger level, like in terms of core constitution, you're just not sure. So my recommendation is if you're not sure and you really, really want to know your core constitution, work with an Ayurvedic practitioner. Why? Because an Ayurvedic practitioner, number one, really knows Ayurveda. They have totally been studying it. They've immersed themselves in it. They know they know and deeply understand the difference between vata, pitta, and kapha, not just as concepts, but how they are get expressed in the body, mind, and spirit. So I work with clients all over the world. Um, I feel so honored that I get to do that. Um, and my online assessments have been spot on. I Because, and Dr. Keisha um, Uwers, who's an amazing Ayurvedic practitioner, her and I talked about this last spring in my Life Changing Power of Ayurveda interview series. She said it like, she's like, you know, reading pulse is reading energy. It's not just feeling the, you know, putting your fingers on somebody's radio pulse and being like, okay, I'm feeling these rhythms. I'm feeling these rhythms. It's, we're reading energy. We, we're reading the energetic um, imprint of the doshas when, because the doshas are energetic forces. And when they're out of balance, you know, they interact with each other. So sometimes the symptoms you're experiencing, it's not straightforward. It's not cut and dry. And it does take somebody who's really looked at the science for a long time, who is devoting their life to understanding the science of Ayurveda to help pull apart the different issues and symptoms and sensations that you're experiencing and help you make sense of it. It's kind of like, um, it's kind of like putting a puzzle a puzzle together. We're collecting all of this information and data and evidence, and we're like, okay, this is how it makes sense. And then we start applying the remedies. And when you start applying the remedies, then it really gets into the experiential realm. 
So someone is saying, when I took your core constitution, I think you meant when I took yours, I was a vata with one question, a pitta, and one a kapha. Usually I can figure out what I need to balance, but currently I'm having huge issues with my seasonal allergies no matter what I try. Okay, so seasonal allergies, you know, it's this is the thing. We want to find out what is at the root of these allergies not being able to get under control. Is it a pitta imbalance? Is it a kapha imbalance? Is it a vata imbalance? So, you know, you can know your core constitution. That doesn't mean that you're going to, just because you know your core constitution, that you know how to balance every single symptom that comes into your realm. Again, I recommend working with a private, I mean, working with a, a practitioner, um, like sometimes one session isn't enough. Sometimes you have something going on that you can't figure out. And then it's like, okay, I need, I need extra support. It's time to get a session. I do it all the time. I'm always seeking support for my body, mind, spirit. I don't try to do it all myself. So the other thing I want to comment on about this comment in particular is, you know, if I read your core constitution and I told you that you're Vata predominant, that doesn't change. If that's your core constitution, that's your core constitution forever. Um, this isn't really this. Yeah, this is a live broadcast. So if you have a question um, and you enter it into the comments while I'm still live, I'll totally answer it. And of course, I will answer all your questions when I go into our Facebook group and check out the comments on every any video that I make. So feel free, ask questions. Um, but we are going to wrap things up fairly soon, FYI. Um, but that's another thing that I think is really important that that we distinguish as members of Ayurveda, Ayurveda Every Day with Talia. You know, when you talk about your dosha, you should be talking about your dosha from your core constitution. I am Vata Kapha. That's my core. Of course, sometimes I have a kapha imbalance. Sometimes I have a pitta imbalance. Sometimes I have an imbalance in all three doshas. That never changes the fact that I am vata kapha at my core. And so I invite you to start le learning Ayurveda, talking about Ayurveda from that perspective. This is my belief. This is my personal belief about how to think and speak about your dosha. I don't know that every practitioner in the world would would agree with me because I've definitely met some Ayurvedic practitioners who don't think that core constitution is as important as current imbalance. But the way I was taught is if you're not thinking about who you are at your core and you're using remedies to shift a current imbalance, then you might be using remedies that don't that don't complement the whole picture of who you are. If, I hope that makes sense. You you know, it like when I found Ayurveda, I had a massive pitta imbalance. I had I had broken out in psoriasis all over my body overnight. That's autoimmune, that's rash. Both of those are pitta imbalance. But I'm not pitta. And so my practitioner knew she couldn't just give me cooling remedies only like cucumber and peppermint and lavender. She had to also be giving me like part of my remedy was spices, like really increasing the heat in my diet so that I could fight the fire with my own fire because my own fire was really lacking at that point. In fact, I had like practically none. So um, I hope this is making sense. And then any suggestions on getting back on track fast after surgery? Narcotics, antibiotics in the IV. Now you have a sty, which is bacteria, hot compress, and question mark. My mom died the same time I was in surgery. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I'm so sorry. Oh, geez. Um... The person who is asking the question right now, the, the way that I deliver my Facebook lives 
um, I can't see who's commenting. I would like for you to send me a private message because this is not a general question. This is um, this is this is a specific question, and I don't want to just give you a general answer when number one, I don't know who's asking it because I can't see who it is, and number two, um, this is this is more complex, and I just. I want to keep these Facebook lives and my general posts in Ayurveda every day, something that can apply to everyone and keep real private, intimate questions and specific questions about your health. I want to keep those as more one-to-ones. So I'm going to take that with you offline. But one thing I will say, um, oh, it's Lori. Oh, Lori. Ugh. Oh, my God. Um... Yeah, I still want to talk to you offline, so let's take this offline. But um, one thing I will say that, that I think can help everybody who's hearing this question is um, it, it's it's fairly benign. Um, you might need to check in with your doctor. In fact, of course you do want to check in with your doctor always before going into surgery, like make sure any alternative remedy is okayed by the doctor just to make sure it doesn't negatively interact with any other medication or anesthesia that you're going to be on. But Arnica as a homeopathic remedy, um, the 30C is what I've been taught. You can take the Arnica before surgery, like a week going into it. And then when you come out of surgery, you can take it for another couple weeks because Arnica is for trauma. And anytime we go into surgery, no matter how minor or major, there's trauma. Being cut open is a trauma. Um, being put under is a trauma. Um, losing your mom is a trauma. So um, that can help. But usually, it you know, it helps the most when it's planned in advance. And um, the other thing is the, the best thing you can do for a sty, a bacterial infection on the eye, it, it is a hot compress. Um, you can also use a, an eye wash and um, that's antibacterial. So it could just be rose water. Um, one, rose is pitta reducing. It's very clarifying. It's very loving. So I like that for you, Lori, because you did lose your mom and like anything that is for grief is going to support you right now. So just flushing your eyes with some rose water. Um, I do it up to three or four times a day when I've got something bacterial in my eye, sometimes even more. Um, I've also used success with success, massive success, colloidal silver as an eye drop to um, clear bacterial infection in the eye. And um, another thing that you can do on the hot compress is, you know, when you're making the hot compress, you could have hot water with one drop of frankincense essential oil, such an amazing antibacterial um, antiseptic essential oil. And you can soak the compress in the hot water with one drop of frankincense and then put the compress on your eye. So you're adding a little bit of you know, herbal, um, herbal power to the compress and all of those things, you could actually do all of those things, um, just alternating and that sty will be on its way out. But we also want to look at, at grief, um, and liver when we're, we have anything with the eyes, um, you know, the eyes are on the same channel as the liver. And so, uh, narcotics, antibiotics, all kinds of, um, you know, medication that's pretty to toxic and taxing on the liver, you want to safely start to move that out of your system. So, um, you know, looking at how you can do some liver detox and in terms of a general thing is the liver loves the color green. So if you did something like aloe vera juice, again, you've got to make sure that this is okayed by your doctor. I, I don't see any reason why it wouldn't be, um, but you could take half a cup of aloe vera juice and add a couple dropperfuls of liquid chlorophyll. Um, I like to use chloroxygen. That's the name of 
a particular liquid chlorophyll that I really love. And you could drink that twice a day. That's really great for liver stagnation, liver toxicity, um, you know, just clearing things out. And then just eat a lot of greens, whether it's, you know, homemade pesto, dark leafy greens that you either steam or boil or water saute. Um, if you're up for it, you could do some fresh green juices um, throughout the day. But just really focus on clearing the liver at this time. That'll that'll help a lot. So I hope that this was helpful today on how to determine your dosha beyond quizzes. Now, if you're catching this video on YouTube, hello and welcome. Um, I am coming to you live from my Facebook group, Ayurveda Every Day with Talia. It's totally free. You're welcome to join and we'd love to have you. So thank you so much for being here. I will see you at our next Facebook Live. They're usually Thursdays at noon, um, unless I'm traveling or doing something crazy. Um, or like last week, I didn't have any internet, which was so frustrating. Um, but I usually will, you know, when I know I'm going to do it at a different time, I let you know inside the Facebook group. So I'll see you next time. Thanks.